Grade 8 Math number 13.1b, finding the volume of a cylinder using a formula. Finding volumes of cylinders is similar to finding volumes of prisms. We find the volume of both a prism and a cylinder by multiplying the height h by the area of the base b. So v equals bh, the volume equals the base times the height. The base of a cylinder is a circle, and so for the cylinder we use base equals pi r squared. So it's the area of the base, and the, if it's a circle, we need the area of a circle. The formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. So for the volume of a cylinder, we use v equals pi r squared h. See? It's the base, the pi r squared, times the height. It's the b and the h multiplied together. So we put pi r squared next to the h. Now, if we want to compare a prism to a cylinder, there's all different kinds of prisms. There's triangular ones like this one. There's square prisms. There's pentagonal prisms that have pentagons on the top and the bottom. All different kinds. This one's a triangular prism. It's got a triangle on the top, a triangle on the bottom. So the two bases are polygons. And the set sides, you can see, are rectangle faces. Here's a rectangle face. There's one back here. There's one on this side. And when we open it up to see its net, N-E-T, that's what it looks like when it's opened up. It's called a net. It would be the three rectangular faces and the triangle bases. See? And we do a cylinder. It's got a circle base and a circle base, and it's got a big, huge rectangle that curves around it. See? So that's the net for a cylinder. Now, I'm going to give you some volume formulas that you need to write down on the inside cover of your spiral or wherever it is that you do it. I always wrote them on the inside cover of my spiral so I could flip to it really fast instead of having to look through all my pages of notes. That way my formulas were really handy. So you need to write these down. And I want you to notice that they're all based off the cylinder one. See that? It's volume equals pi r squared h. When we're going to do the cone coming up soon, we throw a one-third fraction up here in the front. And when we're going to do the sphere, like a baseball or a basketball, we throw a two-thirds here in front of the pi r squared h. See that? They're all pi r squared h, like the cylinder, but the cone's got one-third and the sphere's got two-thirds. See that? That might help you remember them, okay? So, the volume V of a cylinder with radius R is the area of the base B times the height H. So here's our radius right here from the center point to the edge. And this is a base, and this is a base. All we have to do is find out what the area of this circle is and multiply it by the height. So that's volume equals base times height, or volume equals pi r squared height. See? We can find the volume of this cylinder and round our answer to the nearest tenth. We're going to use 3.14 for pi. And remember, because we're doing that, we have to use an approximate symbol because pi has so many digits to it that 3.14 is just going to make an approximation. All we have to do is plug in these numbers into this formula. All right? So we've got pi, 3.14, and our base is 3 inches, so that's the radius squared. So that's r squared, so 3 squared, and our height is 10. So now this is what we've got. And 3 times 3 is 9, and we drop the 10 down. 9 times 10 is 90. 3.14 times 90 comes out, with a little math, to 282.60. Now, because we're rounding to the nearest tenth, we don't put that 0 on there. So we just have 282.6, and we have to remember that it's cubic inches. So to write it that way, we put 282.6 inches with a little 3 exponent. That means cubed, because there's three measures, length, width, and height in that cubic inch. So we have inches cubed, see? Now, what happens when we double the height? We had a 3-inch radius and a 10-inch height. Now we've got our 3-inch radius, but a 20-inch height. We've got our 3-inch radius squared, that's a 9, and our 20 inch height drops down. 9 times 20 is just like 9 times 2 adding a 0. So it's 9 times 2 is 18, and we add the 0 at the back, so it's 180. Now we multiply it by 3.14 for the pi, and a little math on the side, we get 565.20, because we're rounding it to the nearest tenth, we get 565.2 inches cubed. What happened? Well, 282.6, our previous answer down here, if we multiply it by 2, we get 565.2. See that? So when we doubled the height, we doubled the volume. It's two times more volume. 
So if you look at this, basically all we did was we stacked a 10-inch one and a 10-inch one. See? So we just doubled it. No big deal. See? Now, what happens when we double the radius instead? Okay? This one made it like the two were stacked on top of each other, the 10 inch and the 10-inch, and it doubled the volume. Well, instead of a 3-inch radius, what if we had a 6-inch radius? Well, 6 times 6 is 36. We drop down the 10. And we do the 36 times 10, which is 360. Then 3.14 for pi times the 360. We do a little math on the side, and we get 1,130.40. And we take the 0 off because we're rounding the nearest tenth, right? So we get 1,130.4. Well, when we take our original measure, or volume, 282.6, and we multiply it by 4, we get the same number, 1,130.4. So what happened was, when we doubled the radius, we quadrupled the volume. It's four times more volume. See that? So it's got the same height. So in this one, we, it was like we stacked two 10-inch ones and doubled it. But in this one, what's ending up happening is it's like we're putting four cylinders coming up in here. See? Because this isn't three inches anymore. Half of this is, so that would be one cylinder, that would be another cylinder, that would be another one, and that would be another one. See? So it'd be four of them in there. So it quadrupled it. Now... What I want to show you is, if you noticed, I always multiplied the r squared, the radius squared, to the height first. Did you notice I did that? 9 times 20, 36 times 10, 9 times 10 is 90. You notice I did that? The reason I did it is, if I had multiplied pi times 9, like here, see? And then multiplied that answer by 20, the pi times 9 would have come out to 28.26. And the mistake that some people make is they think, oh, I'm supposed to round it to the nearest tenth, and this 6 tells the 2 to go up to a 3. So I'm going to multiply 28.3 to the height of 20. Look at that's 566. That's way different than 565.2, see? So don't round until you're done if you absolutely need to, if it says put the answer to the nearest tenth. Don't do any rounding until you're all done with all the multiplication you might find out you don't even have to do any rounding, okay? So, here's what I want you to remember. A radius is half the diameter, okay? Diameter goes from side to side in the circle. The radius is only half of it. So if you're given the diameter and you need to do radius squared, just divide that diameter in two. The six inches would be three inches, and then you can do your math, okay? All right. So, that's finding the volume of a cylinder using a formula. Just remember that when you double the height, you double the volume, and when you double the radius, you quadruple the volume. It's four times more. And remember, do all your rounding at the end, and if you multiply your r squared to the height first and then to pi, it might make it easier. And remember, you're doing pi, so it's an approximation, okay? We're going to talk about doing the volume of a cylinder in a real-life situation in the next video. That's going to be 13.1c. I hope I'll see you there. Bye.